Jared, um, offensively, how do you guys get back to where you were against Iowa State? Um, you know what? It's it really is as we've said all year. I mean, it um, the the quicker we commit to to knowing how to respond the right way and and come out of the thing, the the better off we'll be. And that's that's what we did coming into the TCU game. We'll have to respond the same way. You know, this is uh that's why I love this game. I think all of us do. It's why we're in it. It is the quickest way to uh, bring out what you're going to be about when things go go the wrong way and. It's just a, you talk about life in a matter of three to four months, you know, and, and when you live out a football season and go through the ebbs and flows. So we'll respond the right way. We believe in our guys the same way we do, believe in our staff the same way we did. It's, it's just a commitment to a response that we'll all be proud of years after this is over. And you ZK Udama, is that a name you're right on to Grease Ford and underline what he's done? Yeah. It's, it's very easy to see as soon as you flip it on, um, talking about the film, of course. And so he deserves and demands everybody's respect and attention in order to us to, for us to have success in this game. There is no question. So do you, how do you scheme up pass protection when you're having issues protecting? Um, I, you know, again, a complicated answer. You know, there's a lot of different ways of doing it. Probably wouldn't detail those, so, so we don't um, uh, give give that all away. But, you know, there's there's several different ways, you know, looking at where it is on the field, whether it's boundary or field, uh, matchups, how you use backs, tight ends, and all the above in protection. Um, there, there's all kinds of ways to go in to try to help it. Um, chips and all those things, things that, that we, we did try. Um, you know, sometimes it just doesn't go the way you want it to. Um, but you've got to have a good plan. You've got to continue to reevaluate that plan to make sure um, we do what we can to put our guys in a, in a uh, good, good place to be able to have the most success we can. They, they play a lot of their two deep throughout the game. They roll guys in. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, that, does that do anything to you about maybe you have to go deeper just to make sure you can match fresh with fresh? Do you? Are you especially aware of who's in the field and when in case you have ideas? Is there any type of dynamic you take into account there? Yeah, they, they do. They rotate a bunch of guys, especially defensive line. Um, it allows them to stay fresh. I think you look at it, and, and 91, is, as you'd stated, has is, is probably played a little bit less plays in the last three games, but been highly productive. So keeping him fresh and the way they rotate has is, is probably helped them a lot. Um, so we've got to be aware when they rotate and when they don't and those things. Be aware who's on the field at all times. I don't know if it um, affects us as much. You know, up front we don't have – we really don't rotate that way with our fronts, but we'll trade personnel and match things as we go through the game too. Just the response that you were talking about earlier, how much, you know, with a game like Saturday, do you try to emphasize the guys like wipe it clean, like we know what we are, let's move it forward. Um, how much are you looking back and, and emphasizing what went wrong, that sort of thing? Yeah, I mean, you, you, of course, we always you have to look at it and evaluate it and make sure we we all be better. Um, but there is there is a a penalty of looking back too long. You know what I mean? Um, I, to answer your question, I would say that we have to reflect back and know what we got to fix, but don't let it affect who we are. Um, don't let it. Uh, it's what you know. We talked about it yesterday when we kind of got our guys back in order. It's it's not like we care for for them anymore or feel any different about ourselves off the field or on it based off of a result. You can't do that. That's why it's such a slippery slope. Of course, there is a such thing as positive energy from a win and momentum and those things. But as long as it's based on a process of the of the work, you know, the results will take care of themselves. You know, the, the fact is we play a good football team this week. We've got three left. We know what's in front of us. Um, and we want these guys to, to feel good about themselves and fly home on the plane this weekend the way they should. And um, we just got to have two good practices to put ourselves in the best position to do that, you know? I was going to say, when you look at ways to attack these guys or any defense, I'm sure in the back of your mind you're thinking, okay, can we protect it first? And then do you say, okay, um, if we can't protect it, do we eliminate it or do we try to figure out ways to protect it? Yeah, I think um, you're spot on. So I think that 
what do you do? Like you try to put your guys in the best position possible. How do you do that? You first look at ways you've got to attack them with different routes and different things. But then it always goes back to a premium of, okay, we can attack them with these routes, but how do we protect it or give our chance, you know, gives ourselves the best chance to. So they go hand in hand because without one, you can't have the other. Um, we've seen that no more true like in two different scenarios on, on each end of the, of the spectrum in two weeks, right? Um, there, were, there were chances we had Saturday with guys, and um, we just, you know, for, for multiple reasons, right, just couldn't get it there. Um, whereas the week before we did, you know, and, and we, so we know what we're aware of it and we just got to keep on finding the best ways. Um, but it is a pretty complex deal, right, to, to look at it and say we've got to do enough to give ourselves a chance to go score points, but you also can't be careless either, you know. So it's, a, it's kind of a game of cat and mouse. We're going to get a chance to talk to Doug Nestor here in a bit. So give me some comments about him, his, his progress, uh, playing one-handed for about half the season. What have you seen out of Doug? Well, you wouldn't have known it from him and how he carried himself out through practice, which I think is the, the biggest compliment to him um, that needs to be said, right? I mean, anybody could have said, well, I can't hardly fit this hand. I'm playing with one hand. He didn't hear anything about it. He went through some tough times with it, and it was really hard at times. Um, but he kept on practicing. Um, did did what he could do to try to make plays work and find success. And I don't think it's any any um, surprise that he has played better since having that off. Um, but I think his practice habits and him pushing himself to be more physical in those things has helped him also get to that point as well. But he's playing at a, at a higher level. Um, we've got to keep pushing him to play even better and play more physical. Um, he knows he's got to take those steps, and I just think he's come a long way in his time here, and I think being healthy certainly helps that go faster. I asked Neil this, I'll ask you this too. Um, they, they call their defense a 3-3 stack, right? But yet on the 2 deep, they got two defensive ends and two defensive tackles, and they play a three-man front. I don't, I don't know how that computes to, to a 3-3 stack. Yeah, I would, I would say that that just kind of gets listed, right? I, well, I would think I didn't even realize it was put like that, but – two defensive tackles. I'm wondering which guy is the hybrid or which guy is the uh, – I don't know. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's certainly you would think three down first. I'll That's say that. what you see on oh, tape. Absolutely. Yeah. Jared, you mentioned on the back end. Is that something that sticks out to you as well? And is that you know, a lot different than other secondaries you compared to this year? Yeah, especially, you know, there's the, the number 23 is really long. Um, the Brents – uh, Julius Brents, I believe, is his name, and um, he's long at corner, um, and runs really well, and and plays through, and sp good eyes in the back end when he plays off. Um, those guys do a good job, and they run downhill to their fits very well. And the new defense they're playing, um, there it seems like each week they're growing to get better and better within the new system. Um, and that length, you know, anytime you have that with with them playing off and and more of zone principles, it creates a factor, especially when they come up and press. Um, so it's going to have to be something our guys are up for the challenge to defeat guys and, and find ways to win. You mentioned McPherson is a hard guy to block. Is that because of the scheme getting to him to block him? Is that what he's talking about? There? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Where they bring him from, you know, and, and where he's lined up makes it a hard dig out, you would say, as we call it, call it where in normal alignments and normal defenses, it's easier to dig those guys out. So just based on where he is, Andy's good at it. He's basically like a free guy. Mm-hmm free to their fit and very similar to what we had faced two weeks ago um, and how they align and, and find ways to add the extra hat. Okay. With an offensive coordinator, what part are you asked to, how much are you asked to be a football coach? How much are you asked to be a psychiatrist? <laughs> Maybe even mom and dad. Well, I mean, I, many veteran coaches that have helped me along my way have always said, you know, coaching is probably the easy part. Um, and, and I wouldn't call it easy, but – you know what, it's it's like anything. When you're involved in a family um, where you're around each other as much as we are, um, there's always going to be things to manage and deal with because if, if there wasn't, there wouldn't be any care, concern, or emotion for each other. Um, so it certainly is. It's it's our jobs. And um, as you create great leadership, it's the player's job to make sure we all kind of get back to that neutral place where we enjoy what we're doing, um, create some positive energy, and – and coach and play the game the way it was supposed to be played with enjoyment. So um, it is a daily challenge, but that's what's beautiful about it. You know, if we all showed up and were robotic in our approach and nobody had the human element, what in the world would we be doing? You know, I think we learned that through COVID. You know, the power of people is, to me, um, one of the best things about this life and sure as hell is in football. 
and um, I create I try to create that in our rooms although the, sometimes we uh, we have our conflicts and fun with it um, the guys you know they make it fun to make sure we can find balance in our lives and detach them from the things they have to carry as young men in this life and they they're carrying a lot of things that they have to get done throughout the day and manage I admire what they do and uh, admire what our staff does quite frankly and the fun part is to try to piece that all together um, because it always works better when you've got great morale and people get along that's just the way it is better does that make you a better father or does being a father make you a better coach i would say both you know it's it's a challenge sometimes as coaches we've talked about this before the challenge is to separate the two sometimes you can fix things at work a whole lot different um, than with my three daughters and and three-year-old son you know so I, i think that it's um, a much different, so sometimes you may get those those crossed up and you can't use the same tactics at home. Um, but it, but it's a fun ride. I think both feed each other. How much of what happened Saturday was them and what they did and how much was what you guys weren't able to do? Well, I mean, a lot of it was, was certainly them. You know, they, they do a great job. Um, we knew we had our hands full. We knew how good they were. They've done it to a lot of people. Um, you know, seeing it for what it was, you know, you really – you know, there's times you, you don't want to publicly say um, anything that would to would act like you're trying to even pass it or not on it. Like it, it, it falls on us, it falls on me. Um, but you know what? We're there's there's about three things you could name in that first half that if we just do what we're coached to do in highly stressful situations, that looks a whole lot different, feels a whole lot different, and you're in a fight. But we didn't, and that's you know you do or you don't, and we didn't, and uh, we own that as a staff first. Our players own it. We move forward, and uh, we find a way to make sure we do this weekend. Hey, Jared, sitting here throughout the season, it's, it's every coach, I guess, too, but you talk about the different defenses teams play and the fronts, coverages, all that stuff. How hard is it just for an offense to do what it does? Because you can't run the template out there if everything on the other side is different. Um, and do you think the opposite is true? Can an offense make defenses adjust just because it's what they do? Yeah, I mean, it is. I mean, you're – uh, the the football in this league week by week is is at a high level. So there's great football coaches decorated throughout the league. So that cat and mouse game is real. You know, I think as you watch it, it's kind of one of the things you learn and continue to grow to to really appreciate and respect about defensive coordinators in the league. And you certainly hope on our end we we do the same of them. But you can see the game being played. There's not you know there's not anything where you can do something and continue to do it if that makes sense. There, there's a change, an adjustment, and then you hope you put yourself in a point where you've looked for the second step ahead where then you counterpunch and it keeps going back and forth like that throughout the game. Those are those are at its best for offenses or for us when we continue to counterpunch, you know, and sometimes um, we've got to do a better job having our counterpunches ready and, and or sometimes they do a great job of being ahead of you. So it's, it's, it is. It's a game of cat and mouse, and you've got to think that way. You've got to have stuff ready for what you think. Um, and then adjust. Say if I may, um, punches so-so last week. The counter punches, was that maybe the bigger problem is that they did what they did, you anticipated that, and the plan B or whatever just wasn't effective. Yeah, I, you know, at, at the end of the day, like there were some matchups that, that we lost. Um, but we, we did. There were some things we, we tried to get to that you would say, okay, we need to continue to do that. Good job. There's other things where you'd say, hmm, you know, um, you would take back, you know, and try to help with some protection some different ways and put our guys in a chance or a better chance to to be able to hold up to create some explosives because we knew we were going to have to create explosives to find success.